Hello everyone, welcome to Open Source Code. This is the third video in the GNU slash Linux tutorial series. In this video we are going to look at how do we verify the ISO image and how do we write it to the USB pen drive. So why verifying your ISO image is important and how it is verified. So first of all you need to download your ISO. Now whenever we are downloading these files, these files are really big. So we have to make sure that these ISO images or whatever file we have downloaded is exactly the same as what was provided to us because we'll be using this file further for installation process. It contains the whole operating system. The files are usually 2 to 4 GB in size. So you don't want your installations to stop in between. So whenever we download a file, we will be verifying our ISO image. So what is the verification process? Generally, whenever you download these files from uh, the website, they are going to provide you something called as a hash of the file. Hashing is an algorithm which generates a unique value for any given input file. Now, if there are no changes to the file, you will always get the same value. There are a lot of different types of hashes. You have MD5 sum, you have SH, SHA and so many others. Generally, you will find the SH a256 value provided to you on the server from where you are going to download. So simply you need to take that value and check your file against this value. Your operating system if you are using Linux or Unix you have command line utilities otherwise you can download some utility which will allow you to do the same. So the process is very simple. Let me give you an example. Suppose you have a line called as ABC and if you generate a hash of this, you will get a real lengthy string. The length of the string or you can say text is always same for a different. So for 256, it will be one length. MD5 it will be one length. So every time I run this, if the hash is say 279 something something and ZA it should always come to this one for this particular value. If anything changes even like instead of ABC you just convert it to ABC this hash value changes completely which indicates our file is changed. Now if you try this you will find that there is a huge variation and that is why in a real big file it becomes important for us to check the hash. Once our hash is verified for the file, we are going to process, uh, proceed to write this ISO image into a USB. This ISO image cannot be copied directly, so we will have to write it using some special tool. So further, I am going to show you the demonstration on the screen. So let's continue and see how actually it will be done. Okay, so let us continue. Here I am on the Linux Mint website in the download section. And uh, hopefully you have already downloaded the ISO. I have already downloaded the ISO from this particular link. So if you go to this link, you have the options for downloading the ISO from different uh, sites. Now, like we had discussed, you need to verify your ISO. So let's go to the verify your ISO page. Over here, scroll down and you will find that 19.3. This is what we have downloaded, 19.3. And when you go to that, you will see that SHA256sum.txt file. So let's open this file. So you can see these are the SHH sums and what we are interested is in Linux Mint 19.3 XFC 64 bit. This is what you, we have downloaded. So you will select your 
SHA sum according to the one which you have downloaded. Now over here, what I need to do is I will be needing this sum. So I'm just going to copy this. Fine. Copy. Now I'll run my application GTK hash, which hopefully all of you have downloaded and installed by now. So this is my GTK hash. So what we need to do is first of all, we need to select the ISO image. So here is my ISO image. I'll open this. Here I'm going to paste the SHA256 sum and I'm going to generate the hash. Now, if this value and in this case, SHA256 sum matches, it will give me a tick. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see the hash is matching, which means the image which I have downloaded is correct and we can proceed for writing this image to the USB pen drive. Okay, so before uh, we go ahead, I'd like to show you a demo which I discussed earlier. So let us just clear all these values. Now what I'm going to do is in this file, I'm going to uh, use another file which I've created. Okay, so here I have created this file linux.txt which just has gnu slash linux written in it. Okay, so and this is another file where I'll just save this. So let us say this is the file which you're going to provide to someone for a download over the net. So what you need to do is you need to provide the hash to the user. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a hash and save it here. So again, I'm going to go to GTK hash and in this case, I'm going to select this linux.txt and I'm going to generate the hash. So you can see this is the MD5 sum or let's take the SHA256 sum. I'm going to copy it and save it over here. Okay, so now this particular hash is the original hash of the linux.txt file. Now, let us say if you have downloaded this file and then you check the hash, obviously uh, the hash is going to match. But let us say for some reason this file is changed by a small bit like this and then if we generate the hash, you will notice that all the values over here have changed. And if I try to match it against this particular hash value, you will see we have no match over here. But if this is the original hash and our file is still intact and correct, so I've just reverted the file back to its original thing. Now if I run it over here, and you will notice that these two hashes match. So this is a simple demo showing how the hash is working. So make sure the file you have downloaded of that ISO image, the hash is correct and then only proceed ahead with the further writing it to the USB pen. Okay, now we'll continue with the process of writing the image to the pen drive. So I have connected a pen drive. You can see a pen drive is connected and I don't have any contents because everything will be overwritten on this pen drive. You should empty your pen drive. Now we already know that the image size is around 1.8 GB. So I'm using a 2 GB pen drive. So you will have to use a pen drive which is higher in size then your ISO image. So here my ISO image is 1.9 GB and the pen drive is 2 GB. So hopefully this should work. Now next thing is you sh if you have still not downloaded go to this site and download this HR app. I have already downloaded the HR app and now I'm going to start it. So here as soon as the HR app starts, it has already detected the 
pen drive if you want you can change it say here but this is what i want to work on and be very sure that you have selected the correct drive if you select uh, any other drive all data on that drive will be lost now i'm going to select the image so this image is selected open select target oh so it says insufficient disk space additional 1.2 mb required so we've just missed by 1.2 mb okay so i've changed the pen drive let's try it again so you cannot you should always use a bigger pen drive it seems so let's select the image again now here this is the drive it is already selected and let's say flash and let's see what happens okay so it started flashing Okay, so the flashing is completed. It unmounted the device. This pen drive is ready. Linux Mint 19.3 XFC it says. And uh, this whole thing is now copied. The only thing that we need to check is whether uh, um, this is bootable or not. So let's do that and see if it works.